Hi, Morgan here for One Infinity, and today I'm gonna try to break this machine. Well, sort of. I don't actually wanna break anything, but I am gonna push this machine to its absolute limit, you know, for science. And the goal here is to reach a feed rate of 1,000 inches per minute without the machine failing. Why? Well, since releasing the Elite Series, we've been talking about how much bigger and stronger and faster they are than the Legacy models, so I thought I'd put this thing through its paces. And on top of that, I just installed this one and a half kilowatt air-cooled spindle from PWN CNC. PWN or Pawn or Pwn? I don't really know, but it's awesome. It was super easy to install, and if I'm trying to find out just how hard I can push this machine, I'm glad to have a spindle as opposed to just a trim router. I'm not totally sure yet, but I have a feeling that in any of these tests I'm about to do, the router would likely be the limiting factor. And by the way, in terms of power, one and a half kilowatts is right around two horsepower, just north of it. I want to be as objective and scientific about this as possible, so here are the parameters I came up with. And guys, when I say scientific, that's just an expression. I'm not a scientist, I'm a woodworker. I'm not calculating chip load, but I do have a control. The bit and the spindle speed I'm using for all the cuts. So that's about the extent of my understanding of the scientific method, so don't hassle me. Anyway, I programmed 16 individual toolpaths cutting straight lines at a quarter inch depth in a single pass, progressively increasing the feed rate from one line to the next. I'm going to start conservatively with 100 inches per minute, then 200, 300, and 400. Then each subsequent cut will go up in increments of 50 inches per minute, 450, 500, and so on and so forth. The fastest one is an insane 1,000 inches per minute. I doubt we'll get there, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, and I'm running the spindle at its maximum speed of 24,000 RPMs. I'm running these test cuts with a one quarter inch upcut spiral bit on a piece of three quarter inch thick plywood, 24 inches by 24 inches. I'm using an upcut bit for chip ejection. Upcut bits pull the sawdust up and out of the cut, whereas downcut bits push the sawdust down into it, which could bog the machine down, especially once I start to get into those higher feed rates. I'm not too concerned with cut quality here, just speed. I had to separate out each toolpath because of the rapid movement. Rapid movement is the machine's travel in between cuts. If I were to save each cut together in a single toolpath, I'd have to set the maximum travel speed on the controller to match the fastest cut. And the rapid movement would be so fast it might not even be able to position itself for the first cut. <laughs> and that's one of the really nice things about the controllers on these Elite Series machines. Because it's an industrial grade controller, you can customize your settings based on the application. Like if I were just cutting some foam, that stuff gives you very little resistance. So whereas I normally wouldn't run the machine that fast, I can seriously crank up the feed rate for stuff like that. Anyway, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and set the maximum speed on the controller to 400 inches per minute to run the first four cuts. Oh, and today I'm trying out a new work holding method. Not really new, but new to me. Starbon sent me some of their CA glue a few weeks ago, and this is the perfect application for it. I know I have this fancy wasteboard, but the way this test was toolpathed, I think it'll be better to use the old CA glue and blue tape trick. It's super easy. You just put a few strips of blue tape on both your wasteboard and the bottom of your workpiece, making sure that they're pretty well aligned. Apply a few drops of CA glue to the tape on the wasteboard, then spray Starbon's accelerator on the tape attached to the workpiece. The accelerator makes the glue dry super fast so that when you put the piece down, hold it in place for a few seconds and it's secured in place. The reason I'm doing it this way is because the plunge moves in these tool paths are outside of the edge of the material. So I don't want any mechanical stops or clamps right there at the edge where the bit's gonna be plunging. Okay, I have my material secured to the wasteboard, my bit installed, and of course, hearing and eye protection. You know what, I should probably have a helmet too. Oh well, here we go. No sweat, 200 inches per minute.
Okay, the next toolpath has a feed rate of 450 inches per minute. So I gotta go into the controller and change that setting. So I'm gonna go into the F1 setup screen, double tap X axis, and change the maximum feed rate to 450 inches per minute. There's no need to do that to the Y axis because I'm just cutting a straight line across the X axis. Okay, I'm gonna hit save, go to the program and MDI screen, tap rewind to make sure it starts from the first line of code, then cycle start. Here we go. to 800, save it, there we go, 800, load. thousand inches per minute with no failure. All right, I'm gonna go back to the computer and make some more tool paths. Y'all just take a bathroom break or something. Okay, just made some more tool paths. Uh, the fastest one being 1,250 inches per minute. I don't expect us to get that far, but I've been wrong before. For example, several moments ago. Anyway, let's run these. Eleven fifty. There it is. We're gonna set up. We're gonna fix eleven fifty. Okay, so I cut a quarter inch deep across 24 inches, hitting a staggering 1,250 inches per minute, and the machine didn't fail. I suppose I could keep going, but I realized that the machine only briefly hit top speed right around the center. It takes time for the motors to ramp up and ramp down, so pretty happy with the results I got. And it's important to note that because of the Elite's closed loop step motors, the operation would have been terminated and the spindle would have stopped spinning as soon as an error was detected. And that never happened. I did, however, end up with some pretty hideous cuts, which I expected. What that tells me is that in terms of speed with these Elite machines, the limiting factor is the capabilities of the spindle and the bits, not the machine itself. I'm not aware of any other consumer CNC on the market that can even jog at that speed, let alone make a cut. Now, would you ever actually need to go that fast? No, it's ridiculous. But this is a testament to how powerful and well-made these machines actually are. It's also worth mentioning that this is just my machine's limit. There are a few factors that can affect a machine's capabilities, like manufacturing tolerances, 
how well a machine is maintained over time, and how well it was assembled in the first place. I mean, I, I might actually have a screw or two loose. I mean, not, like, th that's fairly obvious, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I think that's it for me. I'm really glad I didn't actually break anything, and I hope this gave you a better understanding of how strong and well-designed these machines actually are. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.